so uh, thanks all for being here. Um, good day to all of you. And uh, so I want to talk today about uh, Linux and uh, Zephyr interoperability. Um, I'll come back to the poll uh, midway through the talk, no worries. So uh, at this point, um, thanks for, for attending this, uh, this talk. Um, what I want uh, to think about uh, for this uh, session is whether it makes sense uh, to think of Linux and Zephyr uh, ecosystems as part of a single software stack uh, that could be used to make a continuum of products. So anything that runs on a microcontroller all the way to uh, CPUs. So Zephyr running on microcontrollers and obviously Linux running on CPUs. Um, the reason being uh, by increasing the compatibility between the projects and the interoperability between the projects, um, we can uh, reduce overall burden and, and make it a lot simpler to build uh, beautiful products. So in the end, uh, the focus of this presentation is around building beautiful products. Let's see if this works. Um, so I, I don't have presenter here, it seems, uh, Christian, because I'm not able to change the slides. Ah, that That's the reason I was able to see the poll. OK, fair enough. Um, thank you. Can you, do you. can you switch slides? You can, right? Yeah, yeah. I can. Thank you. Okay, cool. So um, uh, feel free to ask questions at any point. Um, I think we have plenty of time. I, uh, I shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. Um, you can either uh, speak up uh, or uh, uh, type in the chat and I'll, I'll make it a point to uh, uh, keep an eye out there. So uh, as a bio, I've uh, been involved in Linux for a very long time and, uh, very, uh, and much less so on the Zephyr side, uh, mostly during its early days uh, while I was at Linaro. Um, but I'm hoping to that that will change uh, with this new thing that I'm working on. Uh, I've worked at distro vendors. I've worked with a lot of SOC vendors. Um, I've done uh, a bunch of product development as well. Uh, I'm currently a pro uh, head of heading up a product architecture uh, for a project that is uh, as of yet not announced. So uh, more details about that later. I'm not trying to be uh, mysterious. It's just uh, we're not ready to announce the entire thing. Uh, people are dotting the I's, crossing the T's, and, and before an announcement is made. Oops, okay. So uh, this picture in front of you um, is a bunch of IoT devices that are available in the market today. So something like a uh, Fit Band or a smart camera, um, a watch, uh, even a rice cooker. Uh, everything has smart attached to it in the front. A lot of it uses Linux. Um, if, if it's microcontrollers, they use a variety of uh, um, RTOSs. So there's, there's, a, there's a huge variety of, uh, I think there's a lot of fragmentation in the RTOS world. There's, there's a, a lot of uh, different RTOSs in use, um, but uh, definitely a lot of Linux use. So it's either embedded Linux or some variant of some, usually some very old variant of Android. Um, and I have, I have Four of uh, four things from this from these pictures in my house, and in almost every case, the user experience is terrible. The way I onboard things uh, when I bring uh, buy a new device uh, to how they how I uh, interact with the device uh, to how the device is updated almost never. So you they never receive software updates in a lot of cases. Um, and, and the applications that are available to control these devices. So in general, uh, terrible experience. Uh, and if, if somebody has uh, more of these devices in their home, uh, please accept my condolences for that very reason. I, I have a hard time with them. So it is effectively a, the IoT juggernaut. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of these devices being put out every single year uh, by hundreds of companies across the world big and small. There's not a whole lot of uh, good software architecture in, in a lot of uh, cases in the firmware and the images uh, that are being loaded onto these, uh, these products. 
fair enough. Um, so if you look at if you look at the kernel uh, parts of it, um, if you look at upstream rather, so both the Linux and the Zephyr projects have uh, nice, smoothly functioning, well-oiled machines as far as LTS releases are concerned. So they have LTS releases. Um, they have a variety of uh, uh, security fixes flowing into these LTS releases because they have dedicated teams uh, that are working through this and, and backporting stuff into your LTS kernel and whatnot. Uh, and, and I'm going to focus on LTS kernels for this because we are talking products. I, I haven't seen a lot of products that are uh, shipping mainline. And I don't think it's going to change uh, very soon. Um, so, uh, so these LTS releases receive a lot of uh, CI testing as well. Um, but if you go out and look for this, uh, I think besides a few Android phones, maybe, uh, and a lot of Chromebooks, I don't see a lot of the latest uh, work uh, that goes into the LTS and whatnot being deployed on, uh, on these devices uh, as updates. So it's very common to, even if you do see an LTS, it's very common for the LTS to be like six months old or more. So there's a, there's a bunch of open uh, security fixes and um, there's, there's, a, there's a big vector of attack that's still open uh, on, on these devices. And that's not surprising to anybody. Um, the reason I feel is that a lot of these companies, especially the smaller and medium-sized ones, uh, lack specialists. So uh, specialists who know about uh, things like um, OTA. So how are my flash partitions laid out or how should they should be laid out? How is my payload created? How do I get the payload um, onto uh, these devices over the network? Uh, how do I recover from bad uh, firmware updates? That sort of thing. Uh, there's so many OTA frameworks, uh, especially on the Linux side, that uh, that itself is a big choice. Uh, do I go with something like OS3 or uh, Melena or the update framework or Rauk or something else? Um, because each of them has their own pros and cons, whether it's a full image update versus uh, deltas versus only application updates via container or something. And uh, interestingly, because a lot of uh, companies are trying to uh, make money of OTA, um, there's a lot of proprietary cloud components for the OTA uh, solutions. People are trying to monetize by giving away the client side and then monetizing on the server side on the, on the, in the cloud. Uh, the next uh, category of uh, specialists uh, is uh, the security specialists. Again, this is a wide gamut. Uh, everything from, okay, what, what sort of uh, secure uh, boot architecture do I have? Do I use Opti, TFM, uh, or something else, uh, depending on architecture? Um, how do I have processes in place to uh, check for CVEs? Because it's not just the kernel, remember. It's, it's, it's a bunch of other software around the kernel, your user space. Uh, so check for CVEs across all these packages fixing them, testing them, and then finally uh, deploying the updates across, uh, across uh, many of these devices. So the next category of uh, specialists uh, are key provisioning uh, specialists. So I, I just call this out separately from security, uh, mainly because it can happen, it may happen in, in a separate location outside your uh, development offices. So this might happen on the factory floor where uh, uh, the key lifecycle management uh, starts. So how do you provision a device with keys and, and so on and so forth? What are the tools for signing? Then there is uh, IP compliance. Uh, this has become a hot topic lately. Uh, almost all projects I know about uh, um, Linux Foundation, Linux uh, with SPTX, um, Zephyr, uh, they're, all, they're all about the software bill of materials. Uh, because that's where, that's where the supply chains are moving to. Everybody wants to know what is, uh, uh, what am I shipping as part of the product, especially if you're a medical device company um, or a, uh, or an automotive vendor, for example. Uh, networking is another one of those things because there's a plethora of protocols 
uh, are, are we uh, using secure uh, communications? Is it, is it always SSL uh, uh, encrypted in some sense? Or are we sending out packets, uh, um, plain text packets over the air? So, so again, uh, I, I, I'm belaboring a point, effectively saying that there's a lack of specialists in, in a lot of these companies. And that is leading to what we are seeing in the IoT space today in, in terms of software quality, in terms of the lack of software quality, so to say. As a uh, quick aside, uh, when I am working on a product, one thing that keeps me uh, awake at night is Twitter. Uh, more specifically, uh, this handle on Twitter, Internet of Shit. If you don't follow it or if you've never seen this, uh, it's a good one to check out. If you follow this handle and avoid all the things that they say you shouldn't be doing, all the things that they're making fun of, uh, I think your product, oops, oops, uh, your product will end up uh, above average. So um, this, this actually keeps me awake uh, in terms of, okay, I don't want my product, anything that I've ever worked on to show up on the internet of shit. So what is uh, the path to a product? So two different thoughts. Uh, let's let's consider the Zephyr path and, and the Linux path to a product. And uh, we are only focusing on software here. Hardware is a completely different ball game. Uh, so let's just focus on the software aspects of, of the product uh, in this point. So uh, when talking about Zephyr, what do you get uh, when you download the Zephyr sources? Uh, you effectively uh, have support for all the major microcontroller families as part of uh, the code base. Uh, the APIs are very nicely documented. There's a lot of sample code uh, for the various frameworks in there. Uh, there's uh, there's out-of-box support for a variety of popular sensors and, and other hardware out there, peripherals, that you might connect to these boards. And it's all fairly well tested in CI, including their documentation, which is generated through um, uh, through their build system. So if you go to the Zephyr website, read their documentation, and it says, connect this sensor to this board this way and run this code, chances are uh, it is going to work because they've done a very good job of, of plumbing through the entire process and making sure it's always up to date. Uh, one other thing that Zephyr does uh, nicely, uh, and which will be key to uh, the discussion further down the line, is that they actually bundle uh, a bunch of external uh, libraries uh, as part of the software code base. So if you look at uh, things like embed TLS or OpenThread or OpenAMP, uh, TinyCrypt, so these are all projects that are external projects, but Zephyr effectively uh, takes snapshots of these projects and hosts them in their tree so that you get a very well-rounded tested configuration um, when you want to build a Zephyr um, product. Embedded, uh, embedded Linux, on the other hand, is, is slightly different. So, so build root in, in, with embedded Linux uh, is similar to the way Zephyr does things in the sense uh, they also uh, package these, uh, um, these external packages as part of, as part of the repo. Uh, as part of recipes, but it's a it's a newer and smaller project. Uh, when the, the 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 de facto standard, uh, because it's a much older project and because it's a Swiss Army knife of very powerful tools uh, to do embedded Linux uh, uh, development, um, is Yocto, and this is what Yocto looks like to a newcomer. So it's a, as I said, a Swiss Army knife, very powerful set of tools. Very well done. Uh, it's very easy, uh, if you know what you're doing, to make your, your own distro uh, to support your products. It supports, I don't know, nine, 10,000 external um, uh, packages. Uh, there's a lot of layers. Uh, but outside the core packages that are maintained directly by the Yocto project, uh, there is the quality varies quite a lot. So there's, there's, uh, that you would find multiple recipes to, to package up the same uh, piece of library that you're interested in. 
because uh, that's the way somebody decided to package it for their specific use case or their specific recipe. So when you go to when you go with the Octo, uh, you have I mean your choices are are, are clear cut here. Um, that you need to do your homework. So this is what you end up with. I mean, this is what you end up with when you go to IKEA, right? So you end up with a set of recipes, a set of instructions. Uh, you basically need to comb through all those layers and those recipes to figure out the parts you need, the parts that you want to drop, and and maybe override you know, with different policies of your own. And that actually led to the idea for this presentation and, and for the project that we are currently working on. So what if we could uh, pick up the best of both worlds uh, from the Zephyr side of how they do things and, and from the Yocto Linux side uh, to build, uh, allow building an operating system uh, that makes it very easy to develop products on. So instead of making, uh, uh, instead of just Yocto being uh, allowing you to make your own distro, can we uh, can we do something better than that? So at this point, I'm going to maybe take a pause and ask if there are any questions. Okay. So um, what I am uh, talking about um, in terms of this this new uh, operating system. Is, is basically an operating system for all kinds of scenarios, right from tiny microcontrollers to CPUs, right from tiny uh, sensor devices all the way to more powerful industrial uh, or even mobile phones for that matter. Um, Christian, I have lost um, uh, speaker access again. You have? Uh, yes. I, I didn't do anything that is oh, well, my, my presentation shows up for download now but yeah okay I'm back. okay james james briefly was presenter for whatever reason so uh i think you, sh you should have given you control back james sorry uh what was that again? was it a question does it work for you now james yeah. briefly was made himself presenter apparently okay it works now yeah it does okay so um so effectively, uh, this this uh, this all scenarios operating system uh, is, uh, I mean, very crudely put, it would be a policy configuration layer on top of uh, existing Linux uh, and Zephyr uh, upstreams. So let's see how we would build up build this up. Um, let's take let's take a, a minute to understand that. Um, what you would end up with uh, is, okay, you start with your Linux kernel, you start with your Zephyr um, SDK, um, and you then wrap it inside Yocto, uh, because Yocto allows you to do the, these kinds of things very easily. Um, for example, uh, Linux has been supported out of Yocto for a very long time, um, so that's not the issue. Uh, Zephyr, uh, there's a meta Zephyr uh, layer in in Yocto that can be uh, used to combine uh, to compile uh, Zephyr using the CMake build system of Zephyr. So you you can do that. Um, well, uh, Zephyr does have another build system called West, uh, and I'll come back to that later. We we have some ideas on, on whether we want to improve this this Yocto layer in some ways. Uh, on top of this, uh, inside your your Yocto wrapper, um, the first thing I would do is is have a tool chain. So I would have a common set of tool chains which would work across the two projects. Uh, so I would consolidate the version of the tool chain. I would uh, consolidate it whether it's going to be GCC or LLVM. Um, what would be my configuration flags? Uh, hardening features and so on and so forth. So I would use something that's compatible and, and maintainable across both projects. Then I would add a common set of uh, security policies. So here are things like secure boot. So are we are we using common versions of the Opti, TFM, um, um, 
libraries. Uh, how do we perform CV checks and uh, what's our support policy like? What is our what are the key provisioning tools? So when I, when I when I have a product and I want to make a million of them and I want to provision them with keys, um, what's the infrastructure like to, to, to do that across the two ecosystems? So that's what I would think about in, in the security policy. Um, on top of that, uh, I would start thinking about OTA by default. So instead of instead of having this plethora of options, uh, I would I would want to figure out. Um, okay, let's see what I can get common across this. So uh, let's see what I what my flash partition layouts are going to look like, and what am I what is the OS specific software that I need to work with on the Zephyr side as well as the Linux side uh, for OTA to work seamlessly. So on the Zephyr, for example, you have the DFU and the MCU manager. Which, which run on top of uh, MCU boot, right? And uh, on Linux, you have Rauk, you have OS3, you have a variety of things. I, I, I would pick one and, and effectively uh, uh, make, make uh, the rest of the tooling uh, work with this on the Linux side as well as the Zephyr side. Um, on top of that, uh, there is networking protocols, which again is a very wide gamut. Um, so we are talking all the way from application protocol libraries. So things like CoAP, MQTT, WebSockets. So again, have common versions of these libraries across the projects. Uh, radio technologies. So uh, there's OpenThread, DLE, Wi-Fi. Um, you can have common versions of, let's say, the OpenThread libraries and, and use common configuration parameters, for example. Um, we've, we've done a bunch of work uh, in this area. <clears throat> Um, for um, um, for getting uh, getting bootstrapped, and we we've run into interesting problems when we when, when we try to uh, make our Zephyr um, devices talk to our Linux devices, uh, all all being built out of the, you know, the common software infrastructure. Um, so, for example, uh, we found some tricky bug in the uh, uh, the Bluetooth six low pan uh, code, uh, where uh, which handles the direct peer-to-peer uh, -peer communication. Uh, with, uh, on this side, the client was Zephyr, and we found uh, interesting errors, and it led to a patch that went up, that was posted upstream, and still needs some follow-up. Um, on the Zephyr side, uh, we, we struggled a bit, at least on the low memory devices, uh, with the heap size, for example, because the uh, the, the protocol stack crashes uh, with uh, very hard to debug uh, protocol errors and, and you don't know what the error is and, and whatnot. So um, we, we found finding the right balance of uh, the memory size, the heap size for, uh, that is uh, dedicated to embed TLS uh, on Zephyr. That was, that was an interesting exercise and there might be some ideas around how we can make it simpler. Um, uh, once once you have all of this scaffolding in place, uh, you then end up with uh, your application framework and a, and a UI framework, um, which would allow somebody to write applications and uh, generate uh, some basic uh, user interfaces. Um, for a lot of embedded uh, Linux use cases, um, it is not, uh, they don't need to be 3D accelerated or um, have to be very fancy UI uh, features, um, like on mobile phones. So something simpler, like uh, LVGL, uh, which is already supported by Zephyr, um, could be used. Or uh, we could go with uh, Qt, um, if the licensing is right. Um, it's something we need to check at this moment. There would be an agent framework. Uh, which effectively allows devices to talk to each other, uh, discover each other's capabilities, and uh, offer uh, some sort of context-aware reconfiguration. So what I mean by uh, context-aware reconfiguration is um, I, if I am on a video call on my phone and, and I walk into my office where I have a nice big screen with a webcam, then this agent framework could, in theory, um, be able to uh, transfer the call from my mobile phone uh, to to my desktop uh, without any without any interruptions. 
So th this is coming down the pipe. We, we are not there yet on the agent side of things. Um, sensor framework, obviously, uh, Linux Zephyr uh, both have subsystems which will allow sensors to read data. Now that needs to be made available to, uh, to applications. So you would need something of that sort. I did notice that on the Zephyr, uh, in, in the Zephyr uh, GitHub, uh, that the Android's, Android's uh, context aware, uh, uh, what is it called? Context hub framework is being considered uh, for inclusion as a external module. So that would be an interesting one for the sensor framework. But once you have built this, uh, do we stop there or, and, and why? So, We've already built something in, with, with a lot of opinionated defaults. So instead of being a normal Yocto layer where I just do something for, for myself, I'm saying that, okay, this is a, a set of recipes that uh, somebody can take and, and get all of this stuff that I've outlined out of the box um, if you build products using this, this, this stack. Um, so, these opinionated defaults uh, are, are things like, okay, what's my, uh, what's my Lipsy version? I mean, is it muscle or is it glipsy? Uh, what are the con kernel, configure option, kernel configuration options that I will turn on for every device uh, built um, using this framework? Um, tool chain flags, what, what kind of hardening flags am I going to do this? Um, so yeah, the question, uh, so Meta Zephyr was created before West was a thing. That that is welcome. Absolutely. So we have already contributed to Meta Zephyr. Um, if if you are the maintainer, hi. Uh, thanks for taking our patches. And we have some ideas around maybe uh, extending Meta Zephyr at some point and seeing if if we can maybe move it over from the CMake uh, system to uh, to maybe using West as a thing. So um, stay tuned. We will get in touch at some point. Um, so yeah, uh, why, why stop at, at just the uh, just the building blocks? So the next step we would like to take is actually uh, blueprints. So what I call blueprints are effectively um, minimum viable products um, that go beyond what, uh, let's say, a Zephyr sample application does. So Zephyr sample application would tell you, okay, connect this sensor to this board in such a way or I square C. Uh, run this program and yes, you can read the data. Yes, great. But it, that's all it exercises. Uh, we would like to go beyond that. So if, if, if we are building this framework and we are able to build uh, Linux-based uh, products and, and Zephyr-based based products, I would like them to talk to each other. So why not create like a door lock blueprint, which is effectively the minimum viable product for, for a door lock. Uh, and not only does it does the basic features of a door lock, um, but it also uh, offers features like, okay, uh, if this is going to be accessed over, over Bluetooth, I mean, all the smart door lock features that are currently available in the market, but uh, some of them are just terribly implemented. Uh, so instead we show them the way on what the best practice would be uh, for out of box uh, uh, support for things like OTA, things like uh, how, how uh, um, network communication uh, should be encrypted and whatnot between a Linux-based uh, IoT gateway and a uh, Zephyr-based um, door lock, for example, or, or a smart light. So that's, that's, the, that's the idea, that we take this a step further. Um, and if you do this right um, on community hardware, for example, a Raspberry Pi 4, or an Arduino BLE Nano uh, that runs Zephyr. Uh, it's very cheap then uh, at the $20, $30 price point for anybody to be able to reproduce this, contribute back and keep improving these, these products. What we found is that by doing this, it actually forces us to, to look at all the corner cases of, of delivering a product into the hands of uh, customers. And it will also attract OEMs as a result. Um, if, if they can go a step further, then here's a bunch of Lego bricks and now go figure it out. So that's, that's the idea behind taking it uh, to, the, to the blueprints. Um, 
any questions? Um, I'm going to take a second here. Um, right, so Karim, um, yes, I, I did uh, talk about uh, build root uh, initially. Uh, I agree. So uh, this would be very interesting indeed because uh, to me, uh, build root is actually quite similar to how Zephyr does uh, things in a lot of ways. Um, it is still a new uh, project and Yocto just does things uh, that build root doesn't or doesn't want to support because they want, they're trying to keep it simple. So I, I do use build root for my personal projects, uh, for example, because it's simple enough. Um, but a lot of uh, customers do want uh, the fancier features of Yocto. So I, I, I agree that at some point it would be very interesting to engage with uh, the build root community and, and, and seeing uh, if, if they would also be interested in this. And I will get back to this uh, again with my next slide because it actually comes back to uh, what you and the point you're making. Um, so um, I've talked about, okay, there's a vision. I have a dream, but uh, what, what is the low hanging fruit? What could we do to kick, kick start an, an effort around this? We've already done some work around this, but uh, um, I think we are now ready to go live in a few weeks. Uh, to, to uh, engage with the rest of the communities. Uh, so what are the kinds of proposed uh, improvements I would do? So one simple one would be uh, library version C. So if there is a version of a library, um, let's say embed TLS or open thread uh, that is hosted in the Zephyr code base. And then there are uh, Yocto recipes. And as Karim said, build root recipes. If we could, uh, if we could, agree as upstreams. So every upstream will have to make their own decision about this. But this is something I would like to at least attempt to do. Um, to, to, to have, uh, uh, to sync across these versions. Uh, it saves a lot of, um, a lot of engineering effort. Um, so IP compliance is, is the simple one. So you just have one uh, package uh, for a library uh, that you need to do IP compliance work against. But it's also uh, your entire security team, which is uh, backporting uh, bug fixes and uh, finding bugs in, in versions of libraries. If, if you actually try to do that, you end up with uh, benefiting all projects involved uh, by, by seeking uh, library versions. Um, if, if upstreams are not uh, open to this idea at this point, I'm guessing at some point we would have to start carrying them um, patches to uh, up level or down level uh, library versions so we can have this common um, common interface in, in the in the layer I'm talking about but the, the attempt would be to actually engage with upstream about it. Uh, the next one would be uh, as uh, as someone has pointed out uh, extending the meta Zephyr class uh, to use the west uh, build system. Um, it, it makes sense because West offers a, a bunch of functionality uh, that is not present in the CMake version, and uh, it just makes things easier uh, for both the Zephyr community as well as uh, so. So you you would effectively end up with something like a big day class, uh, which understands West commands and, and deals with it. Um, how about improving device longevity? Uh, so this is an interesting one. So I looked at Zephyr, uh, uh, sorry, I looked at uh, Yocto and read-only file systems. Uh, you, would, you would assume that's that's a thing that easily, uh, something that you can easily uh, toggle on. And yes, it's true. Uh, same thing on build root, I, be, I believe. But, but there are always caveats to read-only file systems. So you, you have to figure out, okay, what, what's going to happen uh, uh, on my first boot when I'm generating a host key. So my, my SSH uh, um, uh, daemon is, is generating a host key, uh, drop bear, for example, uh, and it writes it to etc, slash etc. So what's going to happen then? So you probably want like a read write, um, a persistent read write storage uh, for that parts. And, and that's not solved. So you can have a read only file system, but then there's lots of caveats around it. 
So we actually went ahead and extended uh, that functionality, at least in Yocto, uh, to uh, add support uh, uh, for persistent uh, read write storage uh, through system D units. So what you end up with is uh, as part of your as part of your recipes, as part of the core recipes in this layer, um, you you define uh, the points where you would like read write access to the file system. And then you you generate system D units, which effectively uh, uh, mount uh, a read write partition onto those uh, bind mount uh, onto those locations, and it all happens transparently. So uh, we feel it's 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 a nicer way to deal with this problem in a more generic uh, in a generic way. Uh, secure defaults. This is again a whole gamut of things uh, right from the mundane. Uh, so the mundane ones are things like uh, what are my key lengths going to be for my for my SSH keys or for my uh, certificates and whatnot. Do uh, something more involved like uh, do we follow all of the kernel uh, self protection project, the KSPP project uh, recommendations around what kernel configurations and whatnot. Uh, to okay, how do, how do I get out of box uh, secure network communications? So you can use uh, CoAP or MQTT for your applications, but by default, they're they're talking plain text. So how do I make it so that it's, it's extremely hard to, turn, uh, to to actually build insecure apps? So security is built into uh, these images. So so you would uh, effectively use some version of an SSL library uh, like GNU TLS or Embed TLS, whatever you uh, you make your opinionated choice on. And uh, and use that out of the box. Uh, and then uh, there's a, um, if if uh, the feeling is that if if we did a bunch of these things, it would actually improve uh, uh, developer experience quite a bit. Uh, because now all, all of this is pre-configured out of the box uh, for someone uh, to build a device around, and they can focus on their application rather than all of this other extremely important core functionality, but which requires a lot of expertise to, to get right. But if you do it for them and make it easy for them to use it, um, I think uh, there will be adopters. Uh, one other uh, low hanging fruit that we have is the SBOM and the license dashboard. So we've done a bunch of work with Fossology, with scan code, um, uh, to see what our uh, bill of materials looks like. Uh, here's a um, sneak peek at the dashboard. So uh, this is effectively our uh, CI system uh, when it's building an image and generates the, the, the reports uh, from the IP scan and then somehow converts that into this, this dashboard that you can come back and look at later and go through different images and figure things out. Uh, and slightly more easier to uh, parse manner. Um, this is heavily work in progress, so you will hear things about this in the future. Um, but yeah, this is happening. Uh, it's happening in a lot of different places, and so it would be interesting to see if we can if we can reuse some of these bits. Uh, finally, and most importantly, I would say, um, all of this work should happen upstream. So. We don't have any grand plans to, to make this layer like one big fat layer with, with a lot of policy and patches and whatnot. We would prefer to work with the upstreams in, 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 in this case, which is Linux, Zephyr, Yocto, Buildroot, uh, to, to, to get them around to uh, where, where this, this, this might make sense for them to adopt it. If, if they do not wish to adopt for some reasons, then we might uh, end up with not just the policy configuration in that layer, but maybe carry some patches for a while, uh, while we work with upstream to, to, uh, to get them on board. Um, so that I think, I believe is the most important uh, thing that we want to keep, uh, keep in mind. Uh, so I'm, I'm basically done here. Uh, so in summary, um, what I'm inviting us to think about is, is, is think about 
Linux and Zephyr as part of a single OS platform for products. So don't think about it just as a Linux kernel or just as, as, as Zephyr, but a single platform. Um, and by syncing package versions to simpl simplify your security uh, support, uh, your IP compliance support, uh, and then using a bit big uh, a, a Yocto layer to, to enforce policy for the platform. Uh, so the, the opinionated uh, set of defaults that I spoke about, uh, you could you could sort of uh, build devices, build uh, uh, better smart devices uh, that have these features out of the box. And then I'm proposing that we use uh, blueprints uh, to create more realistic product uh, products, so more like uh, um, MVPs, but uh, create more realistic products, not just stop at a simple example, because it, it does, in our experience at least, it does uh, expose uh, a lot of issues uh, with, um, with intercommunication uh, standards between Linux and, and Zephyr and uh, memory constraints uh, on, on MCUs and all of that stuff. So we definitely want to work upstream um, for for all of this, and and in my view, uh, if if you use the broader Linux plus uh, Zephyr uh, ecosystem um, use cases, um, so so a, a door lock running Zephyr talking to a IoT gateway running Linux, that sort of use case is what I have in mind. Um, then. Uh, you can drive standards around security, networking, OTA uh, for the future of, of, of these kinds of IoT uh, devices. Um, that's that's uh, that's the goal, at least, um, to make better products around this. Uh, so there's a comment here on chat. Uh, Yocto can generate NS bomb uh, as part of uh, your build. Uh, yes, uh, we are following that work. Um, it's recent work as far as I understand, and uh, it, it is interesting. So yes, we will reconcile the work we've done uh, to what, what is happening inside Yocto and, and see uh, what we can contribute back, what makes sense there. Uh, another comment is uh, Yocto can also do reproducible builds, which is something of interest for security. Absolutely. So we are already uh, um, using that uh, to be able to reproduce builds. So once you once you tag a um, a release of this of this all scenarios operating system, um, we would like to be able to reproducibly rebuild a Zephyr as well as um, uh, Linux targets for that. So so the manifest effectively uh, controls uh, what is the version of Zephyr and Linux that we are going to pull in. At this point, we are on 5.10 LTS for Linux and a 2.6 LTS for Zephyr. So that's what we want to pull in. Um, and in fact, how am I doing for time? Uh, you're done. Oh, OK. So well, good. Um, so, stay Perfect tuned. Time. so stay tuned for more announcements at ELC uh, that's happening. And thanks for listening. To be clear, you have we have fifteen minutes gap, so so don't feel chased off the stage. <laughs> the next right. one doesn't start for fifteen minutes. Uh, if there are any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. If if you want to stick around.